The good doctor. Well, this doctor has retired and turned into the good janitor named Tom. He realized that dirty floors caused sickness and so he is doing his part, and as a bonus he gets to heist and rob a bank on the side. His exceptional intelligence and problem-solving skills shows us he's the most intelligent janitor in the world. During his school days, he proposed a plan that effectively resolved the Mexican oil spill crisis, attracting the attention of the world's eight largest oil companies. They competed vigorously to hire him even before he graduated, offering him executive positions, company stock, and an annual salary of 400,000 US dollars. Despite the incredible opportunities presented to him, Tom turned down all these offers. Instead, he accepted a job offer from Walter Moreland in Spain. This job involved using his exceptional brainpower to crack a vault that was considered an engineering marvel and contained an item that Walter was after. For over 80 years, no one had ever managed to break into this unique vault. Walter introduced Tom to his team. Beginning with Walter, he was the owner of a salvage firm, and a few months ago, he recovered several antiques from a sunken ship in Spanish waters. One of the items in that wreckage was a set of three coins that provided valuable treasure coordinates. Unfortunately, the salvage mission failed, and the Spanish authorities confiscated everything they found. The items are now locked inside a miraculous vault in a Spanish bank. Lorraine, Walter's adopted daughter, was responsible for impersonation on the team. She could assume any identity the team needed for their infiltration missions. Klaus, the hacker, handled the team's hacking needs. James, Walter's right-hand man and an ex-soldier, had the best combat skills on the team. Simon was in charge of the team's logistics and equipment procurement, and as long as there was money, he could get anything the team needed. The first day Tom arrived, the team encountered difficulties hacking into the bank system. They required a code to enter but it was unavailable, and time was of the essence. To resolve the issue, Tom suggested a simple solution. They could pretend to be an automated voicemail recording and extract the code they needed from one of the bank's clients. After trying out Tom's idea, the team swiftly obtained the necessary code. He gets raps for his smart thinking and heads to his new apartment. During his second day with the team, Tom officially began studying the inner workings of the Bank of Spain, which is considered the most fortified building on Earth. The bank is equipped with numerous sensors and cameras, as well as guards who are trained to respond immediately to any commotion. However, the biggest challenge the team faces is the headquarters of the Spanish army, which is located across the street from the bank. When the bank alarms are triggered, 500 soldiers will rush in to deal with the situation. Additionally, the bank's security chief is the former commander-in-chief of Spain's counterterrorism force. Tom and Walter's team are essentially facing a formidable force capable of handling any attacks on the bank. The team possesses barely any knowledge about the layout of the vault inside the bank. Consequently, they require a scan to obtain more information about its internal structure. Currently, they know that they need two keys and the fingerprint of the bank's security chief to gain access to the vault. To acquire the two items and information, the team initiates an operation. Tom and Simon pose as janitors to gain entry into the bank, while Lorraine pretends to be an insurance agent specializing in high-value paintings. Inside the rooms where these paintings are stored, safes behind the paintings have the keys required to access the vault. While on the way to the paintings, Lorraine walks with the chief of security and requests that he hold her coffee so that she can shake hands with the bank's director. This allows her to obtain the chief of security's fingerprint, which the team needs to access the vault. In the room where the first painting is located, Klaus assists Lorraine in dealing with the bank's camera surveillance. They record a video of Lorraine scanning the paintings and play it back at 10 times slower than the normal speed to create the impression that nothing unusual is going on. Lorraine locates the safe, prepares her equipment, and proceeds to copy the key. However, an unexpected visitor arrives and complicates matters. With only 20 seconds left before their surveillance hack ends, Lorraine must be positioned correctly in the video. Unfortunately, the chairman of the bank is in her way. Lorraine decides to ask the director to take a picture of her scanning the painting and requests that he step back when taking the photo. At the last possible moment, Lorraine prevents the director from appearing in the surveillance video, just as the hack ends. While Lorraine begins her quest to locate the second key, Tom encounters an issue. His task is to scan the structure of the vault by pretending to be a cleaner and gaining access to the lower floors of the bank. The vault is believed to be situated directly beneath one of the meeting rooms on that level. Tom crawls under the table inside the meeting room and initiates the magnetometer to commence scanning. Unfortunately, a group of individuals enters the room to conduct a meeting, trapping Tom under the table. As if that weren't enough, the device begins to malfunction and gets stuck at 96% completion. After some tinkering, Tom manages to get the device to work again, and the scan is finally completed. Regrettably, this triggered an alarm, and under the leadership of the bank's chief of security, the entire bank was put on lockdown, and army troops were dispatched. 
Meanwhile, Lorraine had just finished copying the second key when the director arrived to retrieve her. In the commotion, she forgot to return the stolen key and shut the safe where it was kept. Eventually, the team decides that Lorraine should toss the key to Tom, who would then put it back in the safe. Tom hurried to the third floor, restored the key, and closed the safe just as he received a warning that a guard was approaching his position. Thinking quickly, he deliberately allowed himself to be caught when the guard arrived at the room. She asked him what he was doing there, and he took off his earphones and acted as if he hadn't heard the alarm. She let him off the hook. Once the operation was over, Tom began to examine the internal structure of the vault. He discovered a section that the scan couldn't show clearly, and he realized that it contained water. The vault was built on the principle of a weighing scale. If the weight changes when the vault is opened, it will shut and flood with water. The team now understands how the vault mechanism operates and must maintain a constant weight balance. Tom starts figuring out how to solve this problem working around the clock. Simon and James made a significant discovery while exploring the area beneath the bank. They confirmed Tom's suspicions that there was a massive scale beneath the bank, but to their dismay, the current balance was zero. Moreover, they found a major problem that could jeopardize their plans. The walls of the underground room were made of titanium steel reinforced concrete with a durable outer layer which made it almost impenetrable. Even with the hardest drill bit, breaching the wall would take them 15 days, which was too much time to spare. The team had a limited window for this heist, and this delay made the entire operation seem impossible to pull off. The team had to consider giving up. Walter took a moment to reflect and went to the square to watch the soccer fans. While observing the crowd, he realized that during the World Cup finals, all the cameras near the bank would face the fans in the square. This insight prompted a change in plans. Instead of entering the bank through the underground passage, they could infiltrate it from the roof. Walter quickly relayed this information to the team, and everyone felt a renewed sense of hope. However, their success still depended on Tom and his ability to decipher the vault's mechanisms. He works tirelessly until he finally devises a plan to tackle the security mechanism of the vault. To demonstrate his solution, he places a cup of water on a scale, revealing the balance move. Next, he removes the cup, sprays liquid nitrogen on the scale, and puts the cup back in place. This time the balance doesn't move because the scale is frozen. Tom explains that the same principle could be applied to the massive vault scale. The only challenge is that they'll require a considerable amount of liquid nitrogen to execute the plan. The team commenced their operation with a solid plan as the soccer game between Spain and Netherlands kicked off. They had a tight window of only 105 minutes to complete the entire operation. To start, they ziplined to the bank's rooftop, cut open a glass window, and entered through the opening. Then they made their way through 100 meters of piping until they reached the entrance to the room containing the vault. Here they would need to cross using a portable ladder. Finally, they arrived in front of the vault, and Klaus began his hacking work to enable the team to gain entry. With the two keys and fingerprint they had acquired earlier, they found themselves facing the impressive vault. Simon took over the next step spraying liquid nitrogen on the scale to initiate the freezing process. As he emptied the tanks, the reaction began, and the vault's floor began to freeze. The team then entered the vault and searched for the item containing the coins they sought. Meanwhile the bank patrol team discovered the open roof window and quickly headed towards the vault. Lorraine found the coins, but what happened next was unexpected. James had planned to betray the team from the beginning as an undercover agent, and now aimed to steal the coins from them. Lorraine was left with no choice but to reluctantly hand over the stolen coins to James. However their escape was short-lived as the liquid nitrogen's freezing effect wore off, causing the vault's security mechanisms to activate. The three of them, Tom, Lorraine and James, found themselves trapped inside the vault as water started to flood the area. As an ex-soldier, James was able to utilize his swimming skills to escape from the trap and flee with the stolen coins. As the chief of security calls in an emergency, his men strap up and begin rushing towards the vault. Tom and Lorraine's lives were in serious danger as they were on the verge of drowning inside the flooded vault. With no other option, Tom came up with a plan to trick the vault system into starting the draining process. He instructed Simon to add more weight to the scale to make it appear as if the vault was full. Simon acted quickly and placed all the nitrogen tanks on the scale, but it still wasn't enough. Just as he was about to give up, he noticed his radio and decided to add it to the scale. Surprisingly, the small radio was enough to make the balance shift causing the water to stop pouring in and starting the draining process. As the army men rushed towards the vault, they were ready to catch the thieves red-handed. However, upon opening the vault, they were surprised to find nobody inside. Tom and Lorraine had managed to escape using the drain pipes, making their way to the upper levels of the bank. With the security force hot on their heels, they were running out of time. In a moment of quick thinking, Lorraine remembered a room she had visited earlier for scanning the paintings. She recalled that the director of the bank usually leaves the window in that room open. Without hesitation, Tom and Lorraine rushed to that room and made their way out of the bank through the open window. They joined the crowd in the square. 
taking their jackets off and blending in with the rest of the people. The soldiers chasing them were getting dangerously close. Feeling defeated, they prepared to surrender. But fate intervened. Spain won the soccer game, and the crowd erupted into cheers and celebration. The noise and commotion made it impossible for the soldiers to keep up the chase, and Tom and Lorraine were able to slip away unnoticed. Several days later, James returns the stolen coins to his employer. However, when they decode the coordinates, they realize that it leads to the Eiffel Tower, which is not the right location. They finally understood that they had been outsmarted by Walter's team. Meanwhile, Lorraine had switched the coins in the vault, which caused James to steal the wrong ones. Tom and his team are in a resort in France, and stumble upon the real coordinates of the treasure they were after. They learn that the treasure is now hidden inside the Bank of England. The team gears up for another heist, ready to put their skills to the test once again. Bank heists have always been a popular theme for movies as people find them intriguing. The use of tools, techniques, and deception adds an exciting layer to the film. If you were in Tom's position, would you choose to live a normal corporate life or take a chance on an impossible mission? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video please subscribe, drop a like and click on that bell. See you again next time.